Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, we will call the Common Council to order. I am going to ask the clerk to call the roll to determine a quorum. All the person may. Here. Probst. Here. Reinke. Here. Rote. Here. Vitali. Here. Weigel. Here. Barzak. Here. Chapleski. Here. Haas. Here. Lysak. Here. Ten present, none excused. We have a quorum. Our pledge this evening will be led by Alderman May. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have two items before us under public hearings this evening. I'll ask the clerk to read public hearing number one. A hearing on the special use permit to establish a restaurant within a portion of Riviera Lanes, an existing bowling alley located at 8600 West Greenfield Avenue. Mr. Stiebel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On the uh, northwest corner of 68th and Greenfield is the current uh, Riviera bowling alley. And they want to construct a, a, a restaurant in the western portion of the property. Uh, in this particular area here. They currently own three parcels, two of them are for parking, one houses the uh, Riviera Bowling Alley itself. Uh, as noted in this slide, this is the area of the proposed restaurant. Because it's the zoning of C2, uh, this is a restaurant, it requires a public hearing because it's a special use. Uh, parking is, uh, 96 parking spaces would traditionally be required and the site uh, in this historically impact traffic or parking impact area has 74. Uh, the bowling alley is open every day at 10.30 a.m. Restaurant hours would be basically consistent with uh, the hours of normal hours of operation, uh, with some exceptions such as the possibility of, of weekend uh, breakfasting. Uh, the menu is kind of a, it's a typical pub menu with burgers and cheese sandwiches and soups, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, the landscaping area uh, would be re with raised platter beds in three of the areas. Also, uh, fencing around the perimeter that to uh, screen it from the residential areas, and then the Planning Commission also added some additional fencing uh, to again protect the residential properties to the north. And then also the dumpsters, which are currently just kind of located in this general area, would now be enclosed uh, in a containerized refuge container area. Uh, the windows would pretty much remain that are there. They wanted to brick them up, but the, they're currently uh, blocked glass. Uh, and some additional windows would be also installed in here. The back of the building, which would then become the front of the restaurant area, would also be covered with, uh, mostly covered with split, split face block. Uh, the Planning Commission has reviewed this proposal and recommended approval. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Stiebel. Are there any comments, questions from the Common Council on this item? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Barzak. Too used to the other committee we just came out of. Um, the question I, uh, one of the questions I have, I believe that they own the house right to the north of it Anyways, I know that you said there's going to be some screening, but I believe that uh, um, the owners of the Bowling Alley also own that home. Is that correct? So there won't be really any problems with the neighbors there. That's my understanding. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Barzak. Are there any other comments, questions from the council? Mayor Devine. Alderman May. Uh, John, my understanding is that uh, Plan Commission, there was a 3-3 decision on the windows and uh, whether to require them or whether to fill in with block. Um, and... Uh, my understanding is staff recommended that those areas <coughs> be opened up to provide more glass so it doesn't look like this flat facade. Um, can you explain what the reason was to, to put the block in there instead of going with the windows? You well, the, the, um, in this particular area here, there's three windows in here. Uh, the staff also recommended putting two additional windows in there because they're going to close off this door. Uh, the bathroom is behind there, and that would have necessitated relocation of the, on their plans of the new bathroom that they were going to put in there. And that was, I think, the predominant decision to not require them to relocate the, the bathroom plans to accommodate additional <coughs> windows. It would certainly look better, but it was a, a reasonable debate. And that, that impacted all the windows? Or is staff still recommending some of these be put to window? The, 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 
there's going to be additional windows along here, and those the Planning Commission did approve, and those will be incorporated. The ones that were denied were essentially these, and then the two additional ones. Uh, this will still be windows here, but this will just be blocked up. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from the Council? Alderman Weigel. Thank you, Mayor Devine. Uh, John, I'm looking at that elevation from the, <coughs> looking from the west. There's a little knee wall there. It almost looks like it would be perfect if they were going to do a patio. Was there any discussion? Had they, is that something that was brought up at Plan Commission that they wanted to do and it was eliminated or no? No. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the Common Council? Okay, seeing none, are there any comments or questions from the members of the audience? Okay, seeing none, we will close our first public hearing and we will move on to Public hearing number two, I'll ask the clerk to read that. A hearing on an ordinance to create subsection 12.13 sub 9 F 1 through 2 of the revised municipal code of the city of West Dallas relative to site and building design standards. Mr. Stiebel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what we're proposing to look at today is uh, how do we review single family and duplex uh, in the new construction mode. And I do want to emphasize that this is only during the time of the, new, of the construction. Once it's developed, there's no additional review onto it. Uh, currently, uh, at one time we didn't have any review of, of one and two family units, uh, and now the staff can review them and approve them, but if the staff doesn't approve them, they go to the Planning Commission and ultimately the Common Council if they want to appeal it that far. Uh, the primary purpose of this is to give the staff direction of how you want them to administer that. Uh, right now there isn't any particular standard that the staff has to use. And what we're trying to do is lay out, this is how we think we should operate, uh, particularly in the purposes of, of how we want to affect the, the overall look and image of the, of the city. Uh, the biggest difference would be from today, as opposed to the future when and if this is ever adopted, would be it pr predominantly applies to the staff and how the staff uses their discretion. Uh, if the staff does not approve a single family home to be proposed, then it goes to the Planning Commission who can approve it, and they can also appeal it to the Common Council who can approve it. So that doesn't change. The only change is that the staff is going to be having some guidelines of how we're going to interpret that. And the importance of that is that it gives transparency to the public so that they know how we're going to initially handle their review. Uh, now, we can't put in guidelines everything that's ever going to happen. Uh, but so we just want to have just general guidelines. And that is why the importance of the Planning Commission and ultimately the Common Council, who are going to be the arbiters of how our city should look. Uh, so what we're proposing is just minimum design standards. Uh, now, the, the words shall or should, that, that's something that we can debate. But what we want to be able to, what our goal is, is to give the staff some comfort that this is what you want to see uh, in, the, in the gestalt sense. Now, however, there's lots of alliterations that we can't anticipate, nor can we codify. And that's the role of the public officials to make those decisions, uh, not staff. So any variances or creativity uh, would be the domain of the Planning Commission and the Common Council. Uh, what we're trying to do is look at building form and placement, a scale and massing and how things look. Uh, finished floor height would be, uh, obviously, if somebody came in and they wanted the garage on the ground floor and their first floor above, that's something that I'm not sure we want to have staff approving, uh, but in some context it may look good. And that's where the Planning Commission and the Common Council would come into it. Uh, the architectural style, proportionality and dimension, uh, how it fits in with the context of the neighborhood is, kind of, is important. Uh, window placement and, and, and distribution, and, and roof types are also very important as to how, they, how that roof affects the, the character of the neighborhood. Uh, entrances, are they visible? Materials and color, not so much color. Color is, is a very art issue. In fact, all of architectural style is very art. If this house were to be painted purple, staff would probably not approve it. However, if it was a Victorian house, it probably would. But then again, that's up, ultimately up to the Common Council. 
I think we just want to tell people that lighting that you're going to do in your house, make sure it stays on your neighbor, on your property, like we do everybody, all other commercial property owners. Also, the accessory, the parking, we don't, want, we don't want parking dominating the building. However, there may be some cases that we'll talk about in a minute where that's not that bad of an idea. Landscape and screening, we're not talking about what kind of landscaping to be done, only that 50% uh, of the front yard be uh, vegetated and 30% of the entire lot be of vegetation. Uh, here's a good example of uh, massing. Uh, where you have a building, two very similar buildings. Uh, one is just very simple and, and with a little of architectural style, like here, probably for about $4,000 more on a $20,000, $200,000 house. It, it really adds more character to the neighborhood. Now that this is what the staff would approve, this is what they would not approve. Now it doesn't mean the planning commission couldn't approve it or the common council would approve it. That's, a, that's where you, that's your predominant role. Again, we would look at a building like this here with very few windows on the, on the side of the building, very flat. That's something that the staff would not approve, but if it fit in with the context of the neighborhood and or the plan commission or the common council wanted to approve it, they certainly could. Uh, again, with this flat building here, uh, this is a duplex, uh, the staff would want to put something over the doors and make it a visible entrance and get the windows of silver size. Those are kind of proportional issues that, uh, that the staff would, would deal with. We want the staff's direction to be clear and consistent uh, and, and leave the discretion to the, to the elected and appointed officials. And another over by Blue uh, Boy, uh, where they made the, the garage the entire front of the building and took all the grass out and made it all uh, uh, asphalt. That's something that we would not approve. And, but again, if the Common Council or the Planning Commission wanted to approve it, that's something that they could, they could approve. Uh, here's an example of where we, the staff would not approve it, but we probably recommend that you do. Here's a vacant lot that, uh, over on the uh, uh, Reservoir Park neighborhood where they proposed a building like this, where the garage actually dominated the facade of the building. Now, with high quality design work, uh, such as th this portion of the building actually was pushed out in high quality materials, it gave it a whole different look. Uh, and then across the street is another building that's kind of similar to what we're, we're talking about here. This is something that the staff would not approve, but we'd say you need to go to the planning commission and or, and or the common council to approve that. Uh, and I would certainly recommend approval, but that's not the domain, I think, that we want to give the staff that much discretion uh, as to how to do it. So I think the, the primary driving motivation of this ordinance is to give staff guidance of how, in the general context, you want them to operate, but you're still going to retain for yourself the discretion uh, to be very flexible. Uh, and there's a good example of a proposal that came to us not too long ago uh, where they just wanted to put one building on the side and we talked to them, in, them into putting an additional four more windows in there uh, to, to get more light and air and, and better context of what the neighborhood was looking at. Uh, here's a, a, a building that has a very large garage, but it's got a very large building. Very, that's something that we just approve out of routine and probably should. So the Planning Commission has reviewed this and has recommended approval. And we suggest appending some discussions with the city attorney and, and vetting with the common council members as to how we want to, our choice of words and vernacular, and then the other modifications that we want to make. We're in no hurry to get this adopted, so there's no rush to do anything. Uh, but so we recommend that we hold this until uh, for, for further discussion. If you have additional questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Stiebel. Are there questions or comments from the common council? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. John, I understand this is just the beginning of this process, but just real quickly, so this would only be on new construction? Correct. Okay, and you're just talking about bringing our standards more heavily on single-family homes than we had in the past. We Not already, heavily, yes, we already have <coughs> standards for industrial and the commercial and that stuff, multifamily, but not for single-family. It's sort of like... We're all up to on our own devices. We just kind of want to give us ourselves some guidance. And again, so this would only be new construction, and there wouldn't be like a level of remodeling that would trigger no. the review or anything. So 
homeowners can still paint their house whatever color they want right now. Sure. And, and they will be able to do that afterwards also. Correct. Thanks. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. Uh, Mr. Stiebel, uh, would how would this affect, if at all, a house that was uh, more than 50% uh, destroyed by, say, fire? Uh, would they be affected in rebuilding? No. Uh, that's a little bit different. Uh, if it was totally rebuilt, then it would come under these guidelines. However, in all probability, uh, we would, they would probably be able to rebuild what they, what they had before. It all, I don't know. It depends again on the context of the neighborhood. I mean, if it, was, if it worked for the neighborhood before, it'll work again. But if, it, uh, if they were gonna do something different that violated these principles that were laying out, the staff couldn't approve it, but the plan commission could. Well, I'm saying that they had a home that didn't comply with this in the first place. Um, let's say it was uh, a home that was built uh, perpendicular to the uh, street in front of them rather than parallel. And we have several of these homes around the city that are quite substantial. Yes. In that particular case, the staff would not give them approval because we, of the guidelines that we have. We'd say, but go to the plan commission or the, because you, you get approval from them. Right now, every other building that's built, new construction, goes to the plan commission for approval. Staff doesn't have any approval. Only in one or two families do, can the staff approve something without going to the plan commission. And what if the planning commission doesn't approve it? And what if the council says, we don't want to approve it? Then, so now I'm a homeowner that then, just had my house destroyed by fire and I can't rebuild it because even though it was existing before and it was a substantial house, the city's saying, we don't like the looks of it. <laughs> and that's what we're doing. It, it is the city ultimately does decide, should it be rebuilt? Okay. Now, hopefully in your good wisdom, you're gonna go, hey, it was built there before, it was there for 50 years, it looked good in the neighborhood, why wouldn't you approve it? However, the Common Council is the ultimate arbiter. You just, whatever you decide is what's gonna happen. Thank you. Thank you. Are the Alderman Vitelli? Yeah, Mr. Stiebel, I have a couple of questions. Uh, you know, when we're talking about uh, some of the uh, new subdivisions, and the way the uh, the builder, the owner that built the, the new building, so in many cases today, a lot of them, they come with a front drive. You know, they have a side drive, or maybe based on a lot size. I see many of them, they got two car garage right in the front, and the building looks very neat architecture it really looks looks great great so so my question is that is we have like i said even in my district uh, on fillmore drive the fourth district there's a lot of older duplex i mean not duplex single family home uh which they have this <coughs> a garage a jays connected with with the property so what would be the problem really they have a driveway so why we have to go changing transforming the entire codes, I mean, that we have in place at this time. So I'm saying to look at some of the, the issues, but when you come down to uh, that you have a, a property owners, like uh, Alderman Lysak said, the home gets destroyed, so he has a driveway there with, a, with an attached garage. So what would be the problem for the same person to build the same home? You know, to me, as long as, you know, it makes it look presentable, architectures looks great. So, I mean, uh, where's really the, this problem is revolving today, really? I, I mean, I could see some of the old homes where somebody put a driveway and a garage in the front without really any, any architectural uh, design, you know, was done year, years ago. But today, really, many, many of the properties that build new in many subdivisions, that's what they build. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's my question. If that should happen, it should be rebuilt. Now, if it met the guidelines that we've laid out, and it probably would on Fillmore, as long as it felt, uh, as long as it met the context of that neighborhood, it should be approved. Now, if it's, uh, if it's within the, the confines of this guidelines that we're proposing, staff could stamp it approved today. However, if it was beyond that, 
and then we've exceeded our authority, because now we're into your authority, then we send it to the Pine Commission for, we'd recommend the Pine Commission to approve it. Just when we don't have the authority to do that. And if the Pine Commission didn't, then we'd recommend it to take it to the Council. And then the Council is going to be the ultimate arbiter of that. So it, in all likelihood, if a house was burned down, it would be built, it could be rebuilt the same way. I would doubt there's any situation where it wouldn't be, but I'm not saying there would not be. I'm, what we are saying is that in some instances, the staff would not have the authority to approve it because we would exceed the authority that you've given us to approve them. And what you're doing is you're, you're, you're divesting yourself of that authority to approve one or two single families initially, and we want to be clear as to what authority you're giving us and that, and that we don't exceed that authority. And then if any building doesn't, even though it should be, like that one I was talking about a moment ago, it, exceed, it would have exceeded these provisions, and that would have had to go on to the Planning Commission or ultimately the Common Council. So by adopting these guidelines, you should not be changing any of your rights and responsibilities to review and approve these things. Thank You're just saying to yourself, okay, if it's in, within this box of criteria, you can approve it. Anything outside that, bring it to us and we'll take a look at it. Thank you, Alderman Vitale. Any other comments or questions from the council? Mayor Devine. Alderman May. So John, as I understand this, as we were going through this, is your standard is kind of like fluctuating. You don't have a standard. A homeowner, can, or a person who wants to build a house, a company comes in and says, I want to build a house. You say, we need to see more windows here. <coughs> they can say, under what authority, right? I mean, that's part of the problem. You're trying to set a minimum standard, a standard we don't have. Yes, yeah, so I think right now we have effectively been told use common sense. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody disagrees, we're going to say, whose common sense are we going to use, yours or mine? And that's what we're just trying to say. Let's, instead of just leaving it out there kind of nebulous, let's try to corral what our, what, what, what our, our, our responsibilities are and what our limits are, and then we'll operate within that. If you want to make them smaller, you can, that's fine too. If you want to make them wider, that's fine too. But we're just trying to get something in here we don't, it's not saying that you can't change it. I mean, you can certainly change it, uh, but if you, if you keep overruling what we're doing, we're going to come back to you and say, hey, you might want to change these criteria if you consistently want to do something different. Say 75% of the front yard could be a garage. If that's what you want, then let's just change that criteria. But you may want to say, I want to do that on a case-by-case -case basis, and we're going, fine. And then in a case if someone had a fire, just like in any case, I would imagine that the, the risk the person takes in not following the guidelines of going with staff, it's sort of their risk for going to plan commission and getting denied and going to council and getting denied. But the, the truth is they're going to be coming to us with a plan. True. Histo way. Historically, everything went to the plan commission and that could be appealed to the common council. We were trying to be resident friendly and trying to expedite the process. So that's why we came up with staff approval if it falls within a certain range. And we're just trying to tell, ask you to tell us, what is that range? In my experience with the fire in our own district, um, when a homeowner did have a problem with staff, we did sit down, we worked it out, and, and it worked well. Um, and of course, we can always modify these in the future, correct? So you're, you're looking for a starting point, and if there are problems that we notice along the way, we can always modify, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, the only constraint this ordinance was going to put it's going to be on the staff. And if it doesn't say that, we'll work with our city attorney to make sure it does only say that. But you, so you still maintain all the flexibility that you need or, and desire. Any other questions or comments from the council? Seeing none, are there any questions or comments from the members of the audience? Okay, seeing none, we will close public hearing number two. We will move on <clears throat> to item E on our agenda, citizen participation. This is an opportunity for residents to address the council on any matters of interest to them. Is there anybody here that wishes to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Okay, seeing none, we will close citizen participation and we will move on to item E, or I'm sorry, item F on your agendas. Our uh, standing committees will be meeting during recess, those room numbers for those meetings are listed on your agendas on page one. We will move on to item G, the mayor's report. I have a handful of things this evening. I just want to remind everybody that coming in this Sunday, June 7th, is going to be the 
West Dallas a la carte festival in beautiful downtown West Dallas from noon until six. I know we've talked about it here before, but just to reiterate, there will be live music, there will be kids activities, there is an area for pets, there will be food trucks, uh, artists, crafters, and just about a little bit of everything, including a Neil Diamond impersonator. So um, hope to see you there. This is in its eighth year. It's been getting bigger every year and been getting better, better weather every year from the complete washout we had in the first year. So hope to see you there. I want to extend congratulations to a colleague of ours, uh, Christy Johnson, who's one of our community development specialists, was nominated as the leader of the future for 2015 by the Public Policy Forum. I don't know if she's watching, but she's obviously not here, but congratulations to Christy. Um, <laughs> Continuing the congratulations, I attended the ceremony for two West Dallas residents who were elected to the Milwaukee County Senior Citizen Hall of Fame. Uh, Pat Hadalak, who you may have remembered from her winning the Citizen of the Year by the West Dallas West Milwaukee Chamber of Commerce, uh, was, not, was inducted into the Hall of Fame for her involvement in countless organizations, including the Women's Club, volunteering at the Aurora Hospital, uh, the PTAs, you name it, she's been involved in it. And Mary Hero, Hero is a member, or I'm sorry, she is a resident at Village at Manor Park. And she's involved in Festa Italiana and the Italian Community Center. And she has logged over 11,000 volunteer hours at Village at Manor Park. So I want to congratulate them. Uh, Monday, I attended the grand opening of the new spay and neuter clinic for the Wisconsin Humane Society. We want to welcome them to West Dallas. And I want to quickly thank all the attendees and all the coordinators for the Memorial Day Parade and the Memorial Day Ceremony. I want to thank the VFW Post for assisting us with that. Brenda Schmid and Mickey Janicek were also very much involved in getting that going. I uh, started out with a little rough weather, but it was a very successful uh, parade, well attended, and the ceremony was very well attended as also. That concludes the Mayor's report this evening. Do we have any reports from the older persons? Mayor Devine. Alderman Haas. Mayor Devine, I'd like to report uh, a new business relocating uh, from downtown Milwaukee into West Dallas and uh, improving the economy in West Dallas. Uh, the new business is Forward Disability Attorneys, and uh, they relocated to 10101 West Greenfield Avenue. That's the Waterstone Bank building. And yes, that's my law firm. Uh, and it just uh, just made my commute much easier. Uh, and, and the way it went down is uh, we were kicked out of our building in downtown Milwaukee also. Maybe I'm, I could possibly be sharing a little bit too much, but no, <laughs> no uh, the uh, uh, Germania building, which is where we had been uh, uh, where, where we had been for many years, uh, the uh, landlord is converting it from offices to apartments. And so all of us office tenants had to leave. And uh, so the natural fit was for us to come to West Dallas. Alderman, I'm a, little, I'm a little bit hurt that I didn't get invited to your grand opening. I haven't had one yet. Oh, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> it's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other alder persons reports this evening? Mayor Devine. Alderman Barzak. Um, today is June 2nd, and I think, um, I probably cut my grass for about the eighth or tenth time, give or take. Um, as I walk through the neighborhoods and um, drive through the neighborhoods, one of the things that I'm seeing, and also one of the things that I'm seeing um, on our emails, is the number of properties that are refraining from cutting the grass. Um, I have seen one property had a complaint on it that uh, they cut it for the second time this year. Um, please, people, take a look at your lawn. It's so simple to do. It's great exercise. If you cut it often, it looks great. If you wait, it looks terrible. Um, just take a little pride in yourself. Take a little pride in your neighborhood. Go out there and cut your grass. Most of the lots here, I think it takes me about maybe 20 minutes max to cut my grass. Um, it's that simple, and it really, really improves the neighborhoods. Again, asking you, please, Cut your grass, keep it maintained, keep it in nice order. Also, uh, and having said that, summer solstice is just the is on the 21st, so we're almost halfway through the summer in a roundabout way. So it's it's just cut your grass, please. Um, 
Also, I just want to, a little bit on, on what the mayor said is, uh, this Sunday is West Dallas a la carte. Hope to see everybody down there, noon to six. The weather forecast is supposed to be phenomenal. So there's no excuse for everybody in the city of West Dallas to get down there and buy a beer and su support the parade. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Barzak. Any other older persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman Probst. Following up with Alderman Barzak's comment on people cutting the grass, um, I have been working very hard at, at uh, exercising and, and walking as opposed to driving my car around the neighborhoods. And one of the things that I have noticed a lot recently are uh, numerous people walking their pets, their dogs, without leashes. And obviously that's a very dangerous thing. More and more people are going to be outside. You not only put your neighbors, but also your pet in jeopardy. So please make sure that you are keeping them on a leash at all times when not in your yard. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Probst. Any other older persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman May. Two things. I'd like to uh, commend the Rose Hill Neighborhood Association, assuming the council approves their uh, formal uh, <laughs> uh, association this evening. Uh, congratulate them on being the fourth uh, neighborhood association uh, formally recognized here in the, the city of West Dallas. I'd also like to let everyone know that the Friends of La Follette Park has their first movie night coming up. That's on Friday, June 12th. And uh, what I, I hear is that the movie is going to be Big Hero 6. So um, hope to see you out there. And with that, uh, I think we've got enough reminders on grass. I will turn it over to the chair. <laughs> you, could, you. you could touch on cleaning up after your dogs. <laughs> then we get everything. Any other older persons reports? Mary Devine. Alderman Reiki. My turn. <laughs> Who's left? No. I'm so happy and pleased to report that the Memorial Day project for the veterans was so successful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone that participated. By the way, this is a drawing of, of the after-school children that, that we put on the bags. The bags were supplied by Health Hut. We filled the bags. The tables were overwhelming with all the things that we asked for. It was wonderful. The committee members, I have, to, I have to give them kudos. Barb Weller, Kathleen Dagenhart, John and Margie Madock, Emily and Diane Eidenker, Brenda Schmidt, Pat Hedelak, Rebecca Grill, and myself put all the bags together, delivering Randy Cassa, Barb Weller, and her grandson Jake, and Roy Reinke and his family and myself as well delivered them to the veterans who were very, very appreciative. Um, we also had three boxes left of all the toothpaste and the toothbrushes and the shampoo. It was, like I say, it was overwhelming and we were so pleased with the citizens of West Dallas. The businesses of West Dallas came through and I can't thank you enough for contributing to this project for our veterans. Uh, the bags, we lined up in the room 128. Um, they stood like soldiers. The, the thank yous were put on the bags and everything just turned out so wonderfully well. And I thank you for the, uh, for the honor of serving the veterans as well as the, uh, the, the council themselves participating in this project for us. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, reports from the older people this evening? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of the Common Council regular meeting of May 19th, 2015. Second. There is a motion with a second by Alderman Probst. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item J on your agendas. I'll ask for a motion to refer items four through nine to the city attorney. So move. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Reinke, second by Alderman Probst. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item K on your agendas, uh, standing committee reports. We have none. We'll go to License and Health Committee, Alderman Chapleski. Uh, I'm going to be reporting those out after recess. Thank you. Mayor Devine. Item L, Alderman Lysak. 
I move that we stand in recess until <coughs> conclusion of the committee meetings. Second. There's a motion. There's a second by Alderman Vitale. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are in recess. No, no. Mm -hmm.